Bacteria are ubiquitous in nature and that uh, they can be found in almost any environment, be it uh, in soil, in water, in hot springs, International Space Station, and last but not the least, uh, on the surface of our human uh, skin. Now, in normal situations, the, uh, the microbiota present on the human skin is generally regarded as safe. However, in certain circumstances, they do pro cause life-threatening diseases. And one of the commonly overlooked disease is that of chronic wound infections. Now, I'm quite sure almost everyone uh, at some point in the lifetime would have encountered skin wounds either on them or someone they know. Traditional uh, clinical actions once you have a wound on your skin would be to clean up the wound area using a saline spray or apply hydrogen peroxide solution, then apply an antiseptic cream, uh, put on the bandage, and then uh, the doctors may prescribe a dosage of antibiotics depending on the history of how and where the wound was caused. Uh, and this is the first in line treatment options. However, if the wounds do not heal, then at times uh, they progress to the chronic stage and at, uh, at that moment it becomes quite difficult to treat such wounds. More often uh, than not, research has shown that chronic wounds have presence of biofilms uh, in the wound bed. Biofilms are the communities of microbes uh, living inside uh, uh, the matrix environment uh, by attaching themselves onto the surface. And uh, both bacterial biofilms and uh, fungal biofilms have been found uh, thriving in the wound bed. Uh, just because of the presence of biofilms on the wound bed, uh, even though you take antifungal drugs or antibiotics, it kind of becomes difficult to completely get rid of uh, such biofilms. And biofilms have a different kind of environment. They do produce extra polymeric substances. They do produce uh, several enzymes that can uh, easily degrade the antibiotics or the antifungal drugs. But all of this uh, makes it quite uh, difficult for, to completely get rid of the biofilms that are thriving uh, in the wound bed. And this has caused uh, quite a lot of issues, especially uh, in the uh, chronic wounds that have been found in uh, the patients who are older in age, uh, who are immunocompromised or who are diabetic in nature. As I mentioned earlier, uh, hydrogen peroxide is traditionally used uh, to clean up the wound surfaces. However, the uh, the main disadvantage of using hydrogen peroxide is that once you apply it to the wound surface, it, it gets degraded rapidly in the presence of air and uh, it doesn't uh, retain its activity for a prolonged time. And uh, recent studies have also shown that uh, even though uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, is being used as a bactericidal agent, they do have uh, wound healing properties when applied at uh, certain low concentrations. So if we can come up by uh, a strategy by which we can continuously produce hydrogen peroxide on the surface of the wound bed, then we have a better chance of treating such wound infections uh, instead of relying completely uh, on the antibiotics or the antifungal drugs that are being used traditionally. Uh, so our team at Mayo Clinic and our collaborators at Washington State University came up uh, with an idea to develop new technology by which we can locally produce hydrogen peroxide at a constant rate in low concentrations such that it can kill bacteria, the biofilms, uh, as well as it uh, can also promote wound healing. Now, as you can notice here, uh, we used a carbon fabric scaffold material embedded with the cotton fibers in between them. It's a three electrode system. So one end of the carbon fabric will act as a working electrode. The other end is gonna work as a counter electrode. And then in the center, we have a silver, silver chloride electrode. And we attach all these three electrodes onto an external benchtop potentiostat. And when we apply a constant negative voltage of 0 0.6, uh, we notice that uh, we get a low enough concentration of hydrogen peroxide continuously uh, and using micro electrodes, we were able to measure the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide and it was ranging anywhere between 100 to 300 micromolar, which is uh, good enough to kill bacterial biofilms, fungal biofilms. At the same time, it does not cause any toxicity. And we have uh, tested out the uh, efficacy of the system uh, against in vitro biofilms of uh, different isolates of bacteria and yeast.
And this is the uh, overall working mechanism of the scaffold material, which we refer to as electrochemical bandage or e-bandage. Uh, on the working electrode of our e-bandage, we have a partial reduction of oxygen into hydrogen peroxide in presence of water molecules when you constantly apply a negative voltage. So we tapped into this mechanism of continuous production of hydrogen peroxide Compared to the traditional benchtop potential stat that you find in the market, we miniaturize the entire electronics uh, into a penny size uh, potential stat that you can actually put uh, on top of the animals when you want to conduct in vivo experiments. And this is how the end, uh, uh, in vitro setup is going to look like. So we have a biofilm growing on a polycarbonate membrane. You attach all the wires to the variable potential stat, which will uh, produce hydrogen peroxide when applied at a constant negative voltage. And we got very good results when we performed in vitro testing of it. And then based on the results, we decided that we are gonna go ahead and we will uh, use the, uh, the e-bandage system uh, on the animal model. So we developed a, a, a MRSA wound infection model in a Swiss Webster mouse. We started off by uh, creating an artificial punch uh, skin wound on the dorsal back of the animal, and then we inoculated the animal with uh, a methicillin-resistant staph aureus isolate. We let the biofilm uh, grow on the wound bed for uh, three days, after which we would attach the e-bandage as well as the va variable potential stat on, directly on the animal, and then once you insert the battery into the potential stat, we get a continuous production of hydrogen peroxide. Uh, we treat the animals for two days, after which we uh, remove the tissues and uh, we quantify the colony forming unit counts of the biofilm after the treatment. The results that we got were uh, pretty interesting given the fact that uh, the polarized e-bandage group, which is nothing but the active e-bandage treatment group, which produces hydrogen peroxide, we are able to see uh, approximately two log reduction in the overall biofilm CFU counts. Now. Compare that to the traditional vancomycin systemic treatment that is given uh, uh, for treating MRSA wound infections, it did not show any reduction in the colony forming units. And all the other experimental groups did not show any reduction in the colony forming units. So based on uh, the results, uh, we can tell for sure that uh, the production of hydrogen peroxide through the e-bandage is uh, responsible for reducing the biofilm CFU counts. Moreover, we also observed that when you talk in, uh, for, in terms of the chronic wound infections, the other factor that uh, is clinically checked is the amount of purulence, which is how much pus is actually present on the wound surface. And we also noticed that the polarized e-bandage group, which is the active treatment group, we were able to significantly reduce the, uh, the amount of pus or the purulence score after the e-bandage treatment. Compared that uh, to uh, the other experimental groups, including vancomycin treatment, we were not able to see any significant reduction in the overall purulence uh, scores of the animals. Uh, we also uh, went ahead and we also determined the, uh, the potential biocompatibility or toxicity of our e-bandage system and we performed histopathology analysis. We also did scanning electron microscopy of the wound tissues after uh, the treatment and we did not observe any noticeable toxicity to the skin tissues. So based on the results, uh, we can tell for sure that hydrogen peroxide producing uh, Electrochemical bandages or e-bandages can effectively reduce MRSA wound biofilm infections. We are able to see a reduction in the overall CFU counts. We are also able to see a reduction in the purulence scores. And based on the current results that we have, our future goal would be to further how we can further improve the uh, existing e-bandage such that we can uh, properly optimize the electrochemical parameters of the system uh, so that it can produce uh, higher amounts of hydrogen peroxide. We are also planning to uh, upgrade the, the electronics of our variable potential state so that we can include uh, an advanced version of the chip by which you can control the different parameters of the e-bandage just by developing an app which you can co use from your smartphone and you can measure the voltage and other uh, uh, parameters of the entire system. Thank you.